In this video, we'll be going through a variety of acid-base reactions, including neutralization, acid carbonate reactions, and acid metal reactions. Here are our relevant syllabus stop points. In the acid-base models video, we discussed the ability for the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases to help explain the formation of water from a reaction between the hydrogen ion produced from the dissociation of an acid and the hydroxide ion produced from the dissociation of a base. The bronsted lowry theory, however, describes how acid-base reactions occur actually from the result of a transfer of protons from an acid, also known as a proton donor, and the base, which is the proton acceptor. When an acid reacts with a metal, we get the formation of salt and hydrogen gas. Here we have the reaction between sodium metal and hydrochloric acid to form the sodium chloride salt and hydrogen gas. If we look at what is happening stepwise to form the overall equation, the sodium metal is actually reacting with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. The formed sodium hydroxide will then react with hydrochloric acid to form NaCl and water. When we put these equations together, we end up getting the first equation. We can also use the POP test to test for the production of hydrogen gas. We are able to recognize that gas is being produced from the appearance of bubbles in our solution which is being reacted. However, because many of the gases are colorless, we are unable to detect what type of gas they are without doing a test. So, when hydrogen gas is lit in the presence of oxygen, it will actually react to form water which is a highly exothermic reaction producing a squeaky sound. And we can see the equation here. Acids will also react with metal oxides to form salt and water, which is actually the same reaction as between acids and metal hydroxides. This is because the reaction between a metal oxide and water, if we look at the stepwise equation, will actually form the metal hydroxide. This metal hydroxide will then react with the acid to form a salt and water. Acids and metal carbonates will form salt, water, and carbon dioxide, regardless of whether it is a simple carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate. In the above example, calcium carbonate is reacted with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride, which is our salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. In the bottom example, hydrochloric acid is reacted with sodium hydrogen carbonate to form sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Similarly, with hydrogen, we are able to observe the production of gas through the bubbling of the solution. However, we need to do a test in order to identify what gas is being produced. The lime water test is an example of one such test which is utilized to help test for the production of CO2. When we react lime water, also known as calcium hydroxide, with carbon dioxide, we actually form CaCO3 calcium carbonate and water. This will turn the lime water into a cloudy or milky solution because of the poor solubility of the calcium carbonate which is produced. In this example, some solid potassium is added to a solution of nitric acid. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. We should recognize that since potassium is in group 1, it is an alkaline metal. Previously we stated that a reaction between a metal and an acid will produce a salt and hydrogen gas. We can write our equation out below. So potassium, which is in the solid state, is going to react with our nitric acid, which is in the aqueous state, in order to form our salt, which is formed from the metal reacting with the anion, KNO3, and also hydrogen gas, if we remember. After this, we just need to balance it. In this next reaction, we are reacting calcium oxide with hydrofluoric acid. We now know that if we react an oxide with an acid, we will produce water and a salt, just as if we reacted a hydroxide with an acid. The salt that will be produced from a reaction like this will be formed from the cation of the oxide and the anion of the acid. Thus for our reaction, our salt will be CaF2. 
So we can write our equation around this. Calcium oxide is reacted with hydrofluoric acid in order to form our calcium fluoride salt and water. Balancing our equation, we have to add 2 in front of the HF, and now our reaction has been balanced.